Hey Tommy, this is one of my favorite videos that we do well about every six months. And what is that video? Well, it's the cars that died this year. Yep, it's the cars that COVID killed. Is that true? Well, that's not entirely correct with some of these. So we have uh, the top, not just 10, but 11 cars, because we always have a bonus, that have recently gone RIP. But before we get to that list, uh, if you guys like our t-shirts, uh, click on the link below and help support the team. You can look like me and Tommy or not. I don't think that's much of a selling point, Dad. <laughs> All right, let's get right to it, Tommy. What is number 10, please? The Alfa Romeo 4C Spider. Now, the two-door coupe version of the 4C died a little while ago. That just left the Spider to continue the 4C sales, um, but now that is dying as well. Yeah, it asked the question that nobody asked, and that is, who needs a uh, 3X priced uh, Mazda Miata competitor? Yeah. Three times the price of a Mazda Miata. Never really a hot seller. $67,000 starting price, and this year they have sold just 71 4C Spiders, which is not a huge number considering we are now in August. Now, I've actually driven the car, Tommy, and it is, oh my God, super Italian sexy, but there are some problems with it, like the fact that, uh, well, for instance, there's no glove box, no real trunk space, a weird roll-up convertible top, but if you want a car that's gonna be super collectible, get this one and hold on to it because, you know, collectability is time plus scarcity plus, well, sexiness, and this one has all of them. I'm not sure it's that good looking. You don't think so? Mm, it kinda looks like a toad. All right, well, when you get next to it, it looks a lot better. All right, what is the number nine car on our list? Number nine is the Honda Civic Coupe and the current generation SI. We have one parked in our office. It's yeah. dead? Yeah, it's going away. Really? Mm -hmm. That's right. They so, just gave us one. How, how does it die and we're reviewing it? Well, there's a new Civic coming soon, an yeah. all-new Civic. But before we get to the new Civic, Honda has decided that the current Gen Civic is not worthy of the SI or the Coupe. Now, you will recall that uh, Honda killed the Accord Coupe a while back, so it makes sense that they're kind of killing the Civic Coupe as well. I'm, I'm not sure it's a, a huge seller for them. And the SI is also going away. Uh, it's dropping for 2021. You know what killed the SI? What? The Type R. Yes, that, that's right. Because for, for the longest time, basically, the top dog Civic you could buy in America was the SI. Yeah. And then, of course, they brought in the Type R a few years ago. So now it's kind of in this weird no man's land, right? It's not necessarily super fast and it's not necessarily super, well, utilitarian, right? So if you want the kind of the utilitarian one, get the regular Civic, and if you want the super duper track made ready killer, get the Type R. The issue is it's not all that much better than the Civic Sport, which also has a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. And it certainly isn't as interesting as a Type R, which is crazy over the top. So it's kind of this weird middle ground. Now the SI will return for 2022, but it is going away this year. You know what uh, is the best thing about the SI? What? It comes, I think, only in a manual transmission. It's also very affordable. I think the one we have is like 24,000. And you get a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, yeah, if you want to see a review of it, obviously click on one of our reviews. We've reviewed a lot of it because it's been here at our office. Zach actually just drove it to uh, Atlanta and back. Loved it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's that rev hang issue, which I'm not going to go into, but check out the review if you want to know what that's all about. All right, what's number eight? Number eight is the Mercedes-Benz SLC Roadster, the two-door, more affordable SL, um, kind of a smaller brother, right? Mercedes announced a final edition for the SLC back in 2019. Uh, the world is changing and this car is nowhere near as popular as the old SLK used to be. And this one you can kind of say was a death uh, result of COVID because Mercedes is killing some of its more niche models uh, due to uh, the virus. And this is definitely one of the more niche models. Yeah, well, it was like 20 years ago, there was just this super uh, great for consumers, at least for car lovers, war that the Germans waged on roadsters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Z3 came out, uh, the SLK, the Audi TT, right? These were just really hot uh, German uh, convertibles. Uh, and since then, some of the, uh, let's say, shine has gone off the Apple. And now, like, the Z4 isn't as popular. The current TT isn't as popular. Obviously, we're looking at the uh, uh, Spider L. A 4C, you know, uh, and they're slowly waning as uh, the SUVs, the giant crossovers, are making their ascent onto the automotive landscape. The dinosaurs are crushing these little roadsters, and I'm kind of sad. There is going to be a final edition, though. Yeah. If you want one of the last SLCs, that would be a cool little send off. But 
Yeah, no more uh, SLK, SLC, smaller two door yeah. roadster. And once again, I mean, if you want a Mercedes convertible, get the SL, right? But that's like 120 grand. Just get it used. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, sure. like rocks. <laughs> that's true. Then you can get it for 20 grand. Yeah. <laughs> so, number seven on our list is the Lincoln Continental. The Continental is going away again uh, after it was reintroduced for 2020. Now, Ford and Lincoln are transitioning away from cars to SUVs. Uh, remember, Lincoln made a huge huge deal about reintroducing the Continental a little while back. Yeah, they had like 800 position seats, if I remember right. Yeah, right? like 30,000 <laughs> way seats, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they had these cool door handles, and they're like, the Continental's back, and then not much longer after that, it's it's going away. Well, you know, the problem with the Continental was it, um, it was too small, actually. No. Yeah, it was. Too small? It was too small. It didn't have a lot of back seat room. I remember talking to some livery drivers, right? Some, like, uh, limo drivers, and I said, hey, I'm going to be excited about the Continental being back. And he's like, no, 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 man. If we want something, we're going to go with the Navigator, right? So, really, the big crossover SUV uh, took the light away from the... A sedan, and it was the back seat was just way too small. And then the cool things about the, like I said, the the, the Continental, like the, the weird seat that actually adjusts in like 37 ways, not 800, uh, is now in the Navigator. Uh, and then they did that one special edition with the um, suicide, suicide doors. doors. Remember that was pretty cool, but not enough to actually save the vehicle. So um, we have a soft spot for the Lincoln Continental, as you know. There's our hood from our Lincoln Continental Mark V. Uh, so I'm sad to see it go. Now the problem with the Continental Dad is quite honestly it wasn't very good. They had this iconic nameplate. It, it was it's never been very good no. except for maybe back in the day it was very good, but the issue was even though this Continental wasn't just a rebadged Ford, when you started peeling back it had the body its own work, like three liter turbocharged engine yes, number but that it, was unique to it. It shared a lot in common with the Fusion. Yeah. It was front wheel drive biased. It just it, it, they didn't go all out on it. They didn't give it cool styling. They gave it cool door handles, but the rest of it was kind of just a blob. I'm going to make a reference you probably, you know, you probably don't know, but I think the last cool Continental was the Entourage Continental. You know what I'm talking about? No. The, you, didn't, you didn't watch Entourage on no, HBO? No. What year was it? It was a convertible with the suicide doors. Like 67, I think actually 68. they did a bunch of cool... What, what year was that, guys? Let me know in the comments below. They did a bunch of really cool, uh, like, Mark 7s. The last Mark 7, I think there was a Mark 8 too, was yeah. really cool. Here, here's how you know a cool Continental, right? If it's the size of a motorhome, it was cool. And if it's not, it's not. All right, what's next? Next is kind Another of Ford. along the same vein. Yeah, the Ford Fusion Lincoln MKZ. Now, the Lincoln MKZ really was just a uh, uh, somewhat badge engineered Fusion. That's going away as well. So is the Fusion. The last Fusion rolled off the assembly line just a few weeks ago. Uh, both of which are pretty good cars. I mean, especially the Fusion. They had the, 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 the performance version, which was super quick. And the rumor is that it will uh, be back with the name Zephyr on the rear of it. Yeah, but right now we're in a situation where actually Ford is no longer building cars unless, of course, you take the Mustang into account. But everything else that Ford builds is a crossover SUV or truck. Uh, and so, um, really, they've um, you know taken the gun and put a bullet in the head of all their sedans. Uh, which, when you think about it, the Ford Motor Company was built on, I believe, the Model T, right, which is a sedan. Uh, and now they're not building sedans anymore. It's uh, it's kind of shocking. You don't think the Model T was a sedan? Well, it had like 25 inches of ground clearance. Yeah, but it still had a sedan, <laughs> classic sedan. I shape, would say right? that was the original SUV, actually. <laughs> really. All right, really? number five. On Two wheel, one wheel drive. Yeah, but it had like <laughs> the, the the tires alone were like thirty three inches. Yeah, it had this much and like a half an inch wide. Solid axles. That was an SUV. <laughs> number five on the list is the uh, Honda Fit. Yeah. So another Honda is gone. Another slow seller. Uh, the the Fit sales have really tanked in twenty nineteen. You know, your grandma has one. Yeah, she Did does. You? She has the first gen Fit or Jazz, depending on where you are in the world. Yeah. The latest Fit was actually a really cool little car. Uh, they, you know, tons of space on the inside relative to the outside. Uh, very affordable. Had that cool feature where the seats would fold down. That was the coolest flat. thing about it, right? The back seats would fold up so you could stick a bike in there. Yep, and not all that quick. You know, it wasn't a high performance model in the U.S. at least. But and that's what killed it. Mm. They should have made a Type R Fit, given it a manual transmission, slammed it. 
put a big old spoiler on the back of it. You know how badass that would have been? I would have bought one of those. I love small, fast cars. You would have been like nine people to buy that car. No, I disagree. I, I think that would have sold like hotcakes. That's one of those cars that all the enthusiasts say they would want, yeah. and nobody would buy them. Dude, the Fit is such a cool little car. I have a really huge soft spot in my heart for that, because I remember buying it when with my mom, your grandma, uh, and she had that really cool, like, copper color. Yeah. You know, it's kind of coppery orange. And I thought, what a badass car. And, you know, everything about that car was just right, right? It had really, really analog manual controls, super simple to operate. It's just one of those cars that, that kind of fits all lifestyles. Uh, a hatchback, so you could jam more things into it than you should. So I'm, I'm sad to see it go. Uh, and I think, once again, uh, they should have done one of two things, slammed it, manual or lifted it, made it all-wheel drive and turned it into like a, like a badass uh, hard off-roader. They did. They did not. It was called the HRV. That is, that's the <laughs> yeah. new fit. It is. Yeah, right. In 2020, people want small crossovers. The HRV is a small crossover. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like, I'm suggesting they build, um, let's call it the uh, Rhodesian Ridgeback of, of, of the fit and you're, you're coming up with a poodle. Well, they, they build it already. <laughs> Number four on the list is the Toyota Yaris. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> another direct competitor with the Fit. The Yaris is also dead after 2020. Uh, this current Yaris is uh, built in partnership with Mazda. Yeah. It's sold A elsewhere. A rebadged Mazda 2. Yeah, sold elsewhere as a Mazda 2. Uh, once again, another really good little car. Uh, it's super fun to drive. It looks brilliant, but people just aren't buying these small hatchbacks anymore. Yeah. At least in the U.S. You know what the problem with the Yaris was? What? The name. A horrible name, Yaris. It worked for like 15 years. Oh, sorry, Yaris. Get out. Come on, Yaris. Call it anything but a Yaris. Once again, I think the CHR is kind of going to be the yeah the new replacement for the. You Yaris. know what they should have called it? What? The Tiger Shrimp. Ah. Don't like that. I like that. The Tiger Shrimp, dude. That Toyota. That's a free one. Go forward. The next Yaris should be the Tiger Shrimp. So abroad. Isn't it the Tiger Shrimp sees in like 250 thousand different colors. Yes, abroad. <laughs> the um, you, you said that to me many times for some reason. Abroad, you can still buy. There's a new Yaris. Yeah. And actually, like in other markets, there's now like a Yaris Cross, which is kind of a lifted Yaris. So we'll probably get that well, one. You know, Tommy, I'm being a little facetious for the sake of this video, but the problem with these um, small uh, hatchbacks. Uh, and because uh, there's another one coming actually, uh, is they're just so banal, so boring, right? I mean, if you saw all like four or five of them on the street, it'd be hard to tell them apart. I kind of feel the same way with the midsize crossover. They just have no character. If anything, the new Bronco, Bronco Sport, Wrangler, right, have shown that people like cars with a lot of character. I think that. The Fit and Yaris have a ton of character. It's just that they're not in vogue right now. People aren't buying cars. What, what, what character is that? They're super cool. The Fit was a really, really cool. Yeah, the first gen. Yeah, I'll no, give the, you. The, by, the, by, by this Fit, the no, current one. the second gen Fit was kind of a dog. This latest Fit was really good. Certain Yaris's were kind of a dog. This latest Yaris, based on the Mazda, was one of the most fun you could have for under 20K. In, in, in a world of 1,500 different sparkling waters. These are just plain old sparkling water. I disagree. All right, Especially, what's number three? That's another one. Number three, the Chevrolet Sonic, yep. another hatchback going Dang. away. Sonic Turbo, yeah. brilliant I'll car. I'll give you that, the Turbo was cool. Yeah, that was a yeah. zesty little yeah, car. Yeah, we had fun with that. Remember they even did like a, uh, like almost like a, a street rotted one. Yeah, exactly, with the Borla exhaust. Yeah. Sonic hasn't really had any love since its 2016 facelift. Um, weirdly, there will be a 2021 Spark, yep. which is the even uh, teeny tinier hatchback but I, I love the sonic i thought it was super fun it's probably more fun to drive in some cases depending on the trim than like the yaris but it's just you know it once again didn't didn't isn't selling in the volume they needed to but once again uh, you know gm is going the same direction as ford right they're getting rid of all their cars except for cadillac which is doggedly hanging on to sedans right. uh, but yeah gm is doing away with much of their uh, small car lineup, uh, actually all car lineup going to crossovers, trucks, and SUVs. Uh, so uh, uh, good luck with that. I think part of the issue here, Dad, is the profit margin in these, these yeah. tiny hatchbacks. I mean, it's one thing if you're Rolls Royce and you sell a car for $450,000. You, you don't have to sell a lot of Rolls Royces 
for it to make financial sense. But if you're selling a car for 16,000, you gotta crank out a hell of a lot of them for them to be profitable. And I just don't think, even though they may be selling pretty well relative to some other cars, that they're selling enough to make financial sense. So what's number two on our list? Number two is kind of a stinker. Uh, <laughs> it's not a stinker. It is a stinker. It's, it's, if, it, uh, before you say what it is, I'll give you a hint. If um, Honda were to build an old school Buick, this would be the car. Yes, but with 89 miles of range, it was pretty much so a stinker. So what is it? The Honda Clarity EV. Yeah, with those weird like sills that covered up the rear wheels. It was really strange. Clarity fuel cell, brilliant, right? Yeah. Clarity EV, $36,000 plus price tag. 89 miles of range. It doesn't make any sense why this car is still on the market. No offense, Honda, but this is a bad car. Because Honda is such an incredible engineering company. They build some of the best cars in the world. Uh, but the Clarity EV was just too expensive, too ugly, and did not go far enough. Well, you gotta be careful because they're still selling the Clarity plug-in hybrid. Which and is fine. The hydrogen. Yeah, the hydrogen plug-in hybrid, they go more than 24 feet without having to plug them in. So I went on the program, got to drive all three of them. Uh, and yeah, it was kind of a head scratcher why it only had 89 miles of range, especially when you know Tesla was out there already. I think actually the, the Bolt was even out there. So this is not like a car that's been around you know since the early days of the Leaf. This is a recent car. And even like the new Leaf now will go 230 something on its uh, high, uh, biggest battery. So so there's a a, a little theme here uh, that that we developed before we get to uh, number one. Can you tell what that theme is? What? Number 10 and number 1 are actually the two cars that I'm the most sorry to see go. Yep, number 1 is the Buick Regal and Regal Tour X. Yep. So these were rebadged Opals, depending on where you lived in the world. I love the Tour X. Yeah, and the Regal was really good too. They were fun to drive, they looked great. Uh, the Tour X was a wagon, yeah. old school wagon, could hold a lot of stuff, but they just, once again... Well, no, I think I think a death knell came when uh, GM well, sold yes, Opel uh, to uh, what was it PSA at the time, right? Um, so basically, what what ended up happening was that GM could no longer, or eventually could no longer source the European cars. And you know, I just thought the Tourex was on message. It was um, a very sexy wagon, and maybe I'm a typical automotive journalist because we all love wagons. Uh, but it was very, you know, a competitor to the Volvo cross country wagon. Uh, for half the price. Yeah, it was brilliant. And the Regal and was they, great too. And they discounted the hell out of them. And the Regal too, remember they had the GS trims, which were super fun. So I foresee, let me look in the future. Yep, I foresee a Tour X in TFL's future from like five years from now. So when, they, when they're down below 10K, I think we're gonna have to take one and just, just beat the living you know snot out of it off-road. Like, like lift it and really make a fun. I'm not sure it's gonna be very good. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember GM showing us actually the all-wheel drive system on the Tour X, and it was very advanced, right? It had a very advanced off-road torque vectoring system where it could actually allocate power uh, in a real torque vectoring way, not by breaking the wheel, you know, but actually sending power to the wheel that had the most traction. I'm suspicious, but we'll uh, we'll we'll let you know in five years. All right. As always, we have a bonus. What's the bonus, Tommy? And the Accord manual is no longer going to be available. Ah, which is a, a, a huge disappointment because... Another manual bites the dust. Yep, the 2021 Accord will have no manual options, but the Accord is still uh, a great car, uh, it just won't be available with the six-speed. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised they actually built a manual Accord in this generation because I gotta think the take rate on that has gotta be like me and you. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty low. <laughs> and you guys, maybe a few of you out there. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it was cool that Honda was still hanging on to, uh, uh, you know, the classic way of driving a car. I've been doing a lot of thinking actually about why manuals are so cool. Yep. Uh, and I was just driving our um, our uh, long. Well, we just purchased a, an old TT mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, uh, and uh, there's just something so much more interesting and engaging about actually taking c full control of the car as opposed to the car controlling you, where you have control of where it shifts, how much throttle response. You know, you don't have any of that in a manual matic or an automatic car. Well, let us know in the comment section below what do you think of the death of the manual transmission? What do you think of these cars going away? And check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews. One last question before we say goodbye, Tommy. Which of these cars are you sorry to see go? Um, probably the Fit. I really like the Fit. I say get the uh, Tour X or uh, the Alfa Romeo if you've got the budget for it. See you guys next time. Ciao.